Hi, I'm Leslie Bender, a master trainer for the Active Motion Bar, and welcome to Integrated Flexibility and Mobility, which is part of the Ignite program. You're gonna love this workout because not only is your flexibility going to improve through this, but your mobility and core strength will as well. Now, for this workout, what you're going to need, obviously, is the active motion bar. The one I'm gonna to use today is the lighter one. This is our 4.5. This one works great. Something as simple as a tennis ball, a yoga mat, and a small towel. So these are the tools that you're gonna need. Really simple and very, very effective. Now what I love to do with my students um, that I train at home and what we're gonna do with you today is find out a little bit about you and what your needs might be. So this program also combines some fascial work, just some very, very basic things that you can do that you'll feel better in a very short amount of time utilizing a tennis ball. So to begin, let's go ahead and get your, get your tools ready to go. You're gonna to wanna to take your shoes off, so um, it's kinda of hard to work on your feet, obviously, um, <laughs> with your shoes on, and uh, you're welcome to leave your socks on. So, to find out where you might have some tightness and where you might really need some work, this is just a simple couple of tests that you can do. So to begin our workout today, this makes it also a little bit more individual and caters to your needs, which I think is great. I'm gonna have you just stand parallel, okay? Just, just relax, stand parallel. And now let's go ahead and take a step back with your right foot. So just follow me. Now, as you step back with your right foot, what you wanna do is look back and see whether you actually turned your right foot out. And if you did, that will mean that you probably are gonna need some work on your calf and you're gonna need some work on your hip. Now let's do the other side. Now step back with your left foot. And again, go back and do a self-observation and see whether you turned out or not. And if you did, you might have turned out more on the right versus the left. For me, it's more my right side, to be honest with you. So <clears throat> with that being said, now go ahead and just balance on your right foot and you're gonna reach your arms to the ceiling. And all you're gonna do is lean back and come forward, lean back and come forward. And see if you have really nice freedom of motion in your hip. Just kind of feel whether you actually can move through your hip or not. And then do the other side. And just go forward and back, forward and back. By the way, this is what we call the sagittal plane. Now if you notice that you didn't have really good freedom of motion in your hip, and the only way that you were getting there is through your low back, your lumbar spine, that means that you need to work a little bit on your hip and on your calf. And oh, by the way, what's in between the calf and the hip? The knee. And this is why a lot of my clients have knee issues is because of the fact that they don't address the fact that their calves and their hips are tight. So next, let's go from your parallel to a slightly wider position. And I want you to lean to your right and lean to your left. And kind of notice whether or not one side feels tighter than the other. Now we're gonna rotate to the right looking over your right shoulder, to the left, looking over your left shoulder. Do the same thing looking towards me. Rotate right, rotate left. Now where you might find that you don't have really good rotation, how much time do you sit over a computer all day long? Or sit down, period. I'm gonna get you up and really advise that you move throughout the day. Simple techniques. Now bend over, touch your toes and notice if one side feels tighter than the other. It happens to be my right, completely on my right side because I'm very dominant right. So let's begin by placing the tennis ball underneath your right foot or your left foot. I'm gonna let you self-select. Right underneath your toes, we call this the mid-tarsal joint. I want you to pull your toes back towards your knees. And what I want you to do is smash down a little bit on that tennis ball. Now curl your toes. Now pull your toes back. So I want you to curl and press. So all we're doing here is we're, we're starting to wake up the fascia in the foot. So curl and pull back, really simple technique. Just get a tennis ball, take it with you to work. It's, it's, this is such a great compliment with the bar. So now let's go ahead and take the ball underneath the arch. Same thing, I want you to mash it down and release. 
mash and release. And this might be a little painful for you, but wait till you feel the difference. And now go ahead and rub. Rub, 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 rub as hard as you can. So just create some friction underneath the foot. Usually what I advise is just do this kind of fascial flossing, if you will, for mm, probably about 10 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and come off the ball. Now, retest. Bend over, touch your toes. You will ultimately feel the difference between the right and left side. How fast was that? How cool is it? Now, as well, take that same side, whichever one you did, and step back, but have all 10 toes facing forward. Now from here, what we wanna do is start to lengthen in through that calf muscle. So remember, if you turned out, I want you parallel, all 10 toes facing forward. So your opposite knee, this mine being my left, yours, whichever one you're doing, I want you to reach out like you're gonna hug me, come, reaching right for me. And I want you to just reach and come back. So I want you to do that about five times. Make sure you keep your heel down, so bend and extend your front knee. Make sure your spine is lengthened so that you protect that back at all times. So big reach here, hold it, deep breath in, deep breath out. Breathing is important in flexibility training and come back. Once again, reboot, retest. Wow, do a squat. Feel the difference between the right and left side. It's that instantaneous. Now the side that you just did, have a seat on the floor. Grab your tennis ball, real easy. Place it underneath that calf. Now, from here, you want it in the belly of the muscle. Take the opposite foot, cross it over. Now, for a lot of people that are runners, this is, this is your go-to right now. So, the ball's under here, and all you're gonna do is hinge slightly forward. Flex and point the foot. So, you're gonna also maybe even fill this in the shin. Matter of fact, I ran yesterday, and this is like, <laughs> I'm really glad I'm doing this. So, flex and point. And what you can do is you can actually take your hands, lean forward, apply pressure. So, just hold that for about 10 seconds. Each one, as you get more used to doing this, you can actually hold the positions longer. Now, take your hand on each side, and all you're gonna do is gently floss from side to side. So, as they say, it always takes about six weeks to develop a habit. So I like to use the word floss, because what does it make you think of? Flossing your teeth. And, you know, if you don't floss your teeth every day, then shame on you. So think of, if you're gonna floss your teeth, then you also floss your fascia. All right, so from here, we're gonna take the ball. This one's a little bit more painful. And we're gonna place it basically underneath the side of the gluteus. Your knees are bent hands over the side of you, set up nice and tall. All you're gonna do is lean into it and then come back. And so there's a nasty little guy in there that's very grumpy called the piriformis. And so this guy can get very, very grumpy um, when not addressed if you sit all day. So from here, all we're gonna do is once again, is go back and forth. So floss front and back and then side to side. Floss front and back and side to side. Okay, and go ahead and stand up. So once you've got this workout down, you're gonna spend more time doing that, but there's other things we gotta get to. Do a squat. Man, right side, left side, night and day. So let's even things out. And we place the ball again underneath your left foot or right foot. Pull those toes back, create tension in the front of the shin, and then I want you to curl and pull back, curl and pull back. So this just feels really good. You're gonna notice that one foot is more sensitive than the other. And then let's go ahead and get that tennis ball underneath. And remember, like I said, here's your go-to remembering floss. So rub, 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 rub. Just, just get in there and rub as hard as you can, as much as you can stand. And then step off of there. Once again, give yourself 10 seconds. Bend over, reset. You're gonna notice right away, big difference between right and left side. Do a squat, it became easier. So you're wondering to yourself right now, how, did, how is this happening? How am I feeling so different? Well, let's do the other side. Have a seat, cross over. So let's just give you a little education. Think of fascia as your saran wrap. It surrounds every single muscle, tendon, ligament, your entire body. Fascia becomes sticky, it becomes um, very dehydrated. So you wanna make sure that every time, whether you have a massage, whether you get body work done, something like this, drink water. 
So <clears throat> from here now, once again, as you remember, this goes side to side. This is just a really, really quick fix. And then from here, take the ball, you place it underneath the gluteus, side of it, and then knees are out in front of you, hands are to your side for support, and lean into it, come back, lean into it, come back. Do that five or six more times, then go front and back, and then go side to side. So such an easy tool, take it to work. You can do all this stuff as well. So <clears throat> now let's go ahead and uh, have you put your shoes back on. You could also do this barefoot, um, but uh, it's nice to have shoes on if you need them. And we'll get, we're gonna get up and we're gonna do our standing uh, part of this program that will now greatly improve your mobility stability and flexibility because what we did is we just really kind of hydrated and stimulated your fascia of your lower body lower extremities all right so go ahead and stand on up and let's just do a, another really quick test notice how you feel that was that was fast take a step back with the right foot notice if you're more parallel bend into your left knee now see what you feel when you bend and you reach let's do the other side reach Bend, notice if that calf feels better. Now, balance on your right foot. See if your hip feels a little bit, a little bit more mobile. Try the other side and see if it feels a little bit more mobile. For me, I'm not feeling enough mobility yet. So I need to do some stuff with you to really work on lengthening the hip flexor. Now, your active motion bar is such a great, great tool because of the ball bearings inside and how it allows you to feel stability while you are working on mobility. So we're gonna grab our bar, and where you see the two white lines, this is where we are gonna take our grip, okay? So let's start to work into your right hip, and my, um, my right one as well. So you're gonna take a nice wide stance, okay? So as we go into a lunge, everyone has a different lunge. Maybe you can go really deep into the lunge or maybe your lunge is here. All of us have different ranges of motion. So from here, what we're gonna do is activate our core, set our shoulders back and down, reach the bar up over our head. And just here, you're gonna notice how, how it wants to shift and move. That's the beauty of using this product, love it. Now let's open up your right hip by going to the side and you're gonna hear it. You're gonna feel how the ball shift to the end of the bar. And this is gonna to start to waken up your left um, quad glute, but really waken up your right hip flexor. So lean into it. So let's do three, let's do two, let's do one, and now really hold it and go a little bit deeper, as deep as you can and now push the bar away from you. So now you're really, really lengthening that whole right side body and come in. Well, big difference on right to left side now. Let's take a step back with our left leg this time. Set yourself upright first because it creates tension in the hip. And now let's go to here, set back into it and shift. Shift to your right, feel the, the reaction in the hip Shift to your left, do it again. And oh, by the way, how's your core doing? Gotta be feeling this in the core. So let it happen, lean. Let's do three, two, last one. Now I want you to hold it over here and press away. Now really create tension in your left hip. Oh, it feels so good and bring it in. Now from here, do a squat. See how different it feels now. And let's do, a, let's do a reset. Let's balance on our right foot and let's just reach up, lean back. Notice if your hip feels more mobile now. Let's do the other side, mine does. Feels totally different. So lean back, come forward, leaning back and coming forward. So again, if you're a runner or um, you love active sports, which most people do. This is really, really crucial stuff. Now, let's go ahead and take our bar again. And this time we're gonna take a little bit wider stance 
and let's just place that ball out of the way. So from here, we're gonna reach the bar up over the head, or you could always modify and bring it in here. Matter of fact, let's just start here. You're gonna take your right foot and you're gonna cross behind you. So what this is gonna do is open up your left hip, but I want you to let the bar go to the side, go to the side, go to the side, come to center. Other side, cross behind, curtsy lunge, let it shift, let it shift, come back to center. Cross back again, shift, 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 back to center and cross shift, 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 back to center. Our goal here is, is the lateral hip being here. So we're gonna hold our bar and we're gonna actually start with it just in front as a, basically as a tool for balance. I want you to turn your toes to the right. So you start parallel, turn them to the right. Nice and tall, and I want you to push into your left hip. So you're gonna bend your left knee. So sit back and come up. So really lean into that hip as though you're hitting a wall. Sit back into it, come back up. Sit back into it, come back up. Let's do it one more time and back up. Now, let's make it a little bit more challenging on our core and our stability by holding onto our bar. Sit back and come up. This just changed things. Now, let's add that element of shift, hold. Notice what you start to feel in your left glute. It's massive. It's awesome. And back to center and lift. So what might you think, what test did we do that that would affect? This would affect your right to left lean from side to side. We always look at the back and we always get mad at having low back pain or upper back pain, but 90% of our back problems actually come from our hips. So you notice that we start here. Okay, so holding onto our bar. Our feet are parallel, we turn them now to your left, squat down and come back up. Squat down, come back up. So by the way, are you a golfer, tennis player? Then this exercise is for you. Now, you're pushing, you're really pressing into this hip. Let's take the bar this time. Hold it out in front, squat, come back up. Abs are engaged, always. Weight is in your heel. Now let's shift, shift, shift. So really feel your core switch on. Feel your glutes switch on. So three, two, one, and come up. All right, we have to set the bar down, but I want you to see the difference. Lean to your right, lean to your left. Now, you might even see as you're following me that I'm going farther now because of the two things we just did. So, again, if your lateral movement is compromised, you want to do your curtsy lunge with your bar with a shift, and then you want to do basically like you're hitting a wall, this movement, all of which has a huge influence on your lateral hip complex. Really, really, really important. And again, how cool is that? Don't you love it? I love it. Now we're gonna need our towel. I wanna get a little bit more into the front of the hip. So let's place the towel down and let's place our left knee on top of the towel. If you're like me and you got really grumpy knees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift forward into this left hip, okay? So from here, once again, um, feeling the influence of the stretch um, utilizing your bar is huge. So as you shift forward off your kneecap, lean over. And as you do, I want you to actually bend into that knee a little bit, come back to center, reset, go to the other side. So don't squeeze anything, there's no reason to tuck, or do anything like that, but just really feel the lengthening in that hip. Let's hold it here, big stretch here, and then come back in. So that test that you did standing on the hip, that you are going to feel a difference. So once again, place the towel under your knee if you need it. You may not even need a towel under your knee, I just do. So as you press forward, you're also gonna feel a really nice big lengthening in the front of the hip, your quadricep. So, if you're a skier, this is a good one. So we're here, so lean into it, feel the shift, come back to center, reset, other side, back to center, really, really feel a nice big shift here, come back in, 
stretch, back in, hold it, lengthening through your spine and in. You know, I hear so many times trainers say squeeze, tuck, tighten. We don't use the words in this program that way because we're trying to get length out of your body. Now, we're gonna take our little towel and we're gonna place the towel literally rolled up underneath our low back so that you have a little support. So all you've gotta do is roll it and place it behind your low back and, and just make like a little shelf, a little, a little wedge. From here, I hear clients say all the time, I wanna strengthen my core, but I hate doing crunches. And I'm right there with you, because crunches for me, I absolutely don't love. Now you could also use another yoga mat behind you as an option. As you lean back into your towel, I want you to think of engaging your core. Let's first do this without your bar. And this guy lo loves to shift, it just does. So as we, as we raise our arms to the ceiling, we're gonna lean back until we actually feel our core activate. Now, if you do have any kind of, you know, rectus diasty or you, you, you've had, you know, any kind of issues, obviously in your abdominal wall, then just sit up a little straighter so that you're always protecting your low back. From here, we take our, our bar out in front of us and we lean back. Now, you're saying that's not too bad, but what happens when you keep, keep the ball bearings very still, but then all of a sudden you start to shift? You're gonna to start to feel your oblique switch on. You're gonna feel your core automatically turn on, which is crucial in any kind of flexibility and mobility training, is to have a strong, healthy core. Uh, too many people do not, and they wonder why their back hurts. So now, let's sit back into it, right? And now again, go to your right, go to your left. We increased our lever length, which makes a big difference. Now, let's go ahead and lean back a little bit into your towel, come back to center. It's my favorite exercise, come back to center and in. So we're working all those muscles of the front of your core without ever compromising your low back. Let's do three more and two, one more and bring it all the way up. Don't you love it? Wasn't that cool? Now, go ahead and set your bar down and your towel. Let's go ahead and come up to a standing position. Now, as I said, at the end of this workout, what's important for me is how you feel. So don't think about it, just do it. Take a step back with your right foot. Look back, is your foot more parallel? It should be. Do the other side, step back with your left foot. Is your left foot more parallel? It should be. If not, you know of the things to work on. Balance on your right foot. See if your hip mobility feels different. Step on your left foot. See if your left hip feels more mobile. Lean to your right, lean to your left. Rotate right, rotate left. And last but not least, bend over to touch your toes. Ah, I feel so much different. So when you, when you get the habit, like I said of flossing, of doing these very simplistic exercises with a tennis ball, a towel, and above all your active motion bar, this will give you the opportunity to be a much more efficient, um, you know, weekend warrior or athlete, and um, find that your mobility and your flexibility will increase dramatically. I thank you uh, for joining me for the Ignite program because we are so excited about it and I can't wait to see you in future workouts.